God damn it. Anonymous is being fucking stupid again. I need some help. Lord Killian! I gotta yell really loud because he's in outer space. Lord Killian! Alright, alright, you don't need to yell. It wouldn't work anyway. Sound doesn't travel in space. But I can hear you just fine because I planted a microphone on you. Wait! I'm not wearing any clothes. Where'd you put it? Where do you think? How do you think your dick got that big? No! By the way, you might want to steer clear of power transformers. Just a tip. Anyways, can you help me with this anonymous video? Eh, sure. Sounds like fun. Hooray! Money used to be about you and me. Throughout human history, money in one form or another has helped societies to evolve through trade and innovation. In the last few hundred years, though, money has gone from being a tool to being the center, the very purpose of our collective life. Oh, you mean around the time governments started centralizing their banking systems? And this has happened as we adopted capitalism as the global economic model. The number one rule of capitalism is this, make more capital. The logic behind this rule is that capital make all other things possible. With capital, which is just money and property in various forms, you can get food, housing, healthcare, a college education. Sounds good, right? The problem is, the way we make a lot of our capital is to extract value from the natural world and each other. Well, where else are you gonna get it from? We call this extraction value creation, and it works like this. You cut down a tree, Make a chair, sell a chair in the market and collect value in the form of money. So you get the money and your customer gets a chair, but what does nature get? Now multiply that tree to a lost wood, a lost rainforest and an oil field many times over. <laughs> You're acting like capitalism is what makes resources finite. No, under socialism and communism, resources still run out. Believe it or not. In fact, they run out a lot faster. What capitalism does is take a valuable resource like trees and give people the incentive to plant more of them so they can make more money in the future. That's why in the United States, we have 20% more forests than we did 100 years ago. And it explains in part why we have climate change. We are turning so many natural resources into money. Our methods treat the people doing the hardest, most dangerous work as disposable units of production. I don't know, I've noticed in capitalism, especially in America, people try not to abuse their workers at all because that's, that's a PR nightmare. It's going to make people not want to do business with them, and it's going to affect their bottom line. You see, capitalism does something wondrous. It lets people vote with their wallet, giving them direct control of what businesses survive and which ones go away. See, you and the average dro has direct control over what happens in society. In fact, with capitalism, it actually seems to happen a lot faster. As soon as what's happening gets a lot of coverage, people stop buying the product in droves, and this gives them a real incentive to change their ways. I don't know, to me, that sounds a lot better than voting for a ruler who will vote for you. I always hate voting for presidents because presidents never freaking fulfill their promises anyways. Capitalism cuts out the middleman and lets you control directly what happens in society. In the interest of making ever-increasing amounts of money, we are undermining the foundations of life. Most of the money made is going to a tiny number of people. Oh, for crying out loud, can we please put this 1% myth to rest? Here's a fact. If you're in the United States and you make $32,000 a year, well under the median household income, then you are in the top 1% worldwide. So you might want to start watching which glass houses you're throwing stones in. Eight men now control as much wealth as the poorer half of the world's population combined. In other words, the majority of us are expected to spend our lives working to create money we will never see. And you know what caused that? The government that you love so much. And if you actually look at a regression analysis, you see that there is actually less inequality the more capitalistic the country is. And that's true with both income and wealth inequality. Basically, corporations donate to freaking politicians. Politicians accept that money and write laws for all the rich corporations, giving them an advantage in the marketplace. You want to know why the rich have all the money? It's because you let the rich write the laws through government. The government is literally selling us out to the rich. And what's your solution? Oh, well, we need more government. You idiot, that's the problem. The damn rich wouldn't have any damn power if it wasn't for the damn government. 
The government that you love so much is the problem. Capitalism makes it better. Government intervention makes it worse. We now live in a financialized world in which the power to create money is held by privately owned multinational banks. <laughs> what are you talking about? Money is created by central banks controlled by government, and it's government that prints the money. In which the needs of the earth that sustains us are treated as barriers to the infinite growth of our stocks of capital. In which the economic rules push more and more money upwards away from the majority. That's because of government inflation. You see, inflation doesn't happen until the new money starts circulating around the economy. So the ones who get to spend it first get to use it as its full value. That's the government, that's the government banking system, and that's their cronies. By the time the money gets around to us, it's worth less, and our paychecks don't go as far. That is a tax. It is a transfer of wealth from the poor and the working class to government and the government banking system and all their cronies. So money is no longer about you and me. If you think we should treat money as a tool, not a god. If you believe that the logic of the future should instead be about you and me and everybody. If you believe the most sacred value should be afforded not to money, but to life, then the chances are you don't agree with capitalism. No, the chances are you do agree with capitalism and you want to use truly capitalist forms of money like Bitcoin or gold. Ones that governments can't manipulate. And my friend, you are not alone. Evidence from around the world suggests that there are now millions, if not billions, of us feeling the same way. We can build new systems to replace this dying one. We can reclaim the future. We can change the rules. How? By doing it with socialism? The same socialism that took Venezuela from being the biggest exporter of grain in the world to a nation of starvation despite having fertile soil and a year-round growing season? That doesn't sound like that hot a deal for the poor to me. And yet, as recently as 2013, it was the darling of socialists everywhere, including Joseph Stiglitz, Mark Weisbrot, Bernie Sanders, Richard Wolff, and many others. The only people that are against capitalism are people that don't understand what it is. Thank you for joining me, Lord Killian. Ah, no problem. It was fun. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. I'll catch you guys on the next episode.